So uh, today I'm going to talk about how to learn temporal correspondence in a self-supervised manner based on our paper in Neurops 2019. So once we have a video, the task we are going to handle here is to learn the pixel-wise or region-wise correspondence among different frames. We treat each pixel or region as a basic visual element and we build a fully connected graph between them where each visual element is a vertex and the possible correspondence between them are the edges. So for each vertex, we model this correspondence by learning the probability with respect to all the possible elements being connected to it. As a result, we will have a probability vector with a length of n which indicating the number of the vertices or pixels of a frame. And in total, we will have an n by n matrix that models the dense correspondence in a, probabil uh, in a probabilistic manner between two frames. So basically, it is a relation, it's described the relations of any pair of pixels from two different frames in a video. So the element of the affinity matrix describes the similarities between two vertices and the full matrix can be used as a global filter to warp one frame feature uh, to another. Alternatively, it can also be used to transform a standard coordinate map which indicates where an object travels to in the next frame. So to sum, there are two different kind of transformations. Um, on one hand, we can use the affinity uh, matrix to transform a feature map as shown in the, in, in the top. And also we can do localization by utilize the uh, standard coordinate to do the transformation, also utilize the same affinity matrix. So this is two basic concepts for the graph structure in this problem. So in this work, we propose to learn reliable dense correspondence from video in a self-supervised manner. The reason that we resort to self-supervised method is because annotating pixel-level correspondence between images is impossible. On the other hand, the learning of video correspondence would potentially benefit a, a large number of video applications, as I will introduce quite a few later on. So in this work, our learning process integrates two highly related tasks, object-level matching that tracks large image region in video, and the fine grain matching, which establishes pixel level associations between consecutive video frames. Although highly related, the object level localization and fine grain matching tasks are seldomly solved together due to different optimization goals. We demonstrate that these two tasks benefit each other by sharing an affinity matrix that associates the content of the two images. The region level localization helps to find and localize the patch, while the fine grain matching further enhance the feature representation by the warping or reconstruction laws. So since we have two shared affinity, uh, which all computed from the same CNN network, so once we are learning these two tasks together, they will, also, uh, they will always progressively benefit the self supervised representation learning in this framework. So this is the basic idea. And uh, as a result, we will see that both the localization and the matching of pixels being continuously improved from the first iteration to the last during the whole training process. So for the next, I will uh, introduce the framework. Given two frames, we first randomly sample a patch from the first frame. We call the sample patch source patch and the second frame the target frame. And then we often image features of the source patch and the target frame simultaneously using a shared CNN. And we calculate a, a rectangular affinity matrix represent, uh, representing the similarities between these two feature maps. So here we also add a softmax layer to ensure that for each row it represents the probabilities with respect to all the pixels or the candidate pixels. So for all pixels in the source patch, we can map them to the target frame by a dot product between the affinity matrix and the coordinate map of these pixels. For example, the LX and the LY will have the same size with the source patch 
and here is the multiplication. And then we using this operator, we can lo localize the source patch in the target frame based on the new locations of these pixels as shown in the yellow bounding box. We call the localized bounding box as the target patch. And once we have the target patch, we put it together uh, with the source patch and move on to the fine-grained matching. We basically want to propagate and warp the color information from the source patch to the target one in this stage, and we will compile it to the ground truth target as a self-supervised signal. In detail, the affinity is, uh, there's also a small affinity matrix computed via the features from the same CNN encoder. And alternatively, we can also open this affinity matrix APP as a sub matrix out of the affinity matrix AF by extracting the columns that corresponded to the localized pixels in the first stage. So, um, here, instead of transforming a row frame, we utilize a pre-trained autoencoder and carry out the transformation in the bottleneck feature space. We reconstruct the target patch features and match it back to the image space by the pre-trained decoder D. And finally, we calculate the objective, for example, the L1 distance between reconstructed and the ground truth target patch. So doing back propagation, the gradient will flow back to the sub affinity matrix, which means as part of the full affinity matrix from the localized stage, the gradient directly flows back to the CNN as shown in the red arrows. In the next iteration, once the CNN gets improved uh, from the back propagation, we will have a better localization in the source patch which will benefit the fine grain matching block to have a better candidate region to match with. And in turn, the fine grain module further enhance the pixel level matching via the reconstruction objective. So that is to say these two modules will always improve each other through the shared CNN during the whole training pipeline. So here is some network training detail. We first train the autoencoder E and D using images in the MS Coco dataset. We only use images without any annotations in this dataset, which means we can also alternatively use any other large scale image dataset without any labels. And uh, uh, to be comparable with several related work, we use a ResNet 18 with four residual block as our CNN structure, and uh, we always train it from scratch. So, uh, so up till now, on top of the progressive training framework I have introduced, there are still existing matching uh, ambiguities that possibly lead to wrong correspondence. Since we use the color appearance reconstruction uh, as the only objective so far, so this gives the model a lot of freedom. For example, one pixel here with the black color can be matched to any pixels with similar color. The objective itself does not regularize the local context for matching, which means we need to resort to more spatial regularizations to eliminate the mismatches. So because we carry out tracking by propagation individual pixels, we propose a concentration loss, which states that once we crop a local regions and transform these pixels to, any, uh, to another frame, these pixels should still stay together instead of diffuse uh, apart spatially. So these laws basically regularize that the local context should also match to each other rather than only match to the individual pixels. So once object, uh, when object or local regions, once they are moving over time, they should move as a unit instead of se uh, like separate pixels uh, and diffuse in the space. So in detail, we carried it out by simply enforcing all the pixels um, to be close to its center, where the C uh, denotes the center. So here, for example, we show the center of the blue pixels as the orange dot. And here we constrain the blue pixels to be geometrically close to it in a frame two. 
We also propose the uh, orthogonal regularization to encourage a cycle consistency. Consider the orange pixel in the frame 1. We can map it to frame 2 as shown by the green arrow and then map them back to frame 1 as shown in the blue arrow. And then we constrain these pixels to fall into the same locations when mapped back to frame 1. Mathematically, we still make use of the affinity matrix that match features from frame 1 to 2 and then back to frame 1 again. Well, the consistency results in this formulation on top of the affinity matrix. And from another thread, since two frames from a single clip usually have constant style, well, the style here refers to similar concept in the style transfer technique, or say the second moment statistic. So here we also describe it as an energy preserving term between these two features. And uh, with these two terms, we can combine them together. And finally, we will reach to this equation showing that the affinity transformation should be orthogonal. So um, this um, uh, orthogonal constraint satisfies both the cycle consistency and also in addition, the style preservation in videos. And uh, in addition for computation, it also saves the, um, the, uh, the training time because it avoids to compute the affinity matrix twice as uh, like forward and backward as shown in the left figure. So in this slide, we show the quantitative ablation study on the task of incense propagation on Davis 17 using the GMing and AFMI evaluations. The task is, uh, is to propagate a ground truth segmentation mask from the first frame to the rest, which I will also introduce later. So we found that by dropping different blocks like localization and uh, the orthogonal constraint, uh, the concentration constraint, the performance can uh, decreases will decreases constantly, which means that all these modules I have introduced so far contribute to the video correspondence learning. So here in this slide, we also compiled with a related work from ECCV18, which uses a randomly cropped source and target patch to match the color. And the, the difference is that this model directly matches the color channel instead of any feature map. So we also follow this setting by remove the progressive training and only constraint we have in this model. We only use the color uh, um, reconstruction, but we added, we added the autoencoder. And we found that purely adding the autoencoder can still already significantly boost the performance by over 10%, which indicates that the transformation is better to be conducted in a feature space with more context information rather than the, the original image space. So uh, during inference, we can follow the pipeline of training by first using the train CNN to extract the features from two consecutive frames and calculate an affinity matrix A and then we propagate any annotations like segmentation or key point uh, from the frame one to frame two by a dot product between the affinity matrix and the provided annotation. So to improve the uh, robustness, an alternative way is to use the recursive method to minimize the noise. For example, we can propagate the ground truth annotations of the first frame as well as the predicted annotations from the pre preceding k frames uh, to the target frame. So k here equals to seven in the experiment. So we average all the propagations to get the final prediction in the for the target frame. And uh, here we also show that in the red circle uh, that the noise can be um, depressed a lot by this recursive processing. So um, in this slide, we show the propagation of instance segmentation mask on the Davis 17 dataset. Our method is able to preserve more details during the propagation process thanks to the learned dense affinity matrix and the joint training of the region and pixel level matching. 
Aside from the abination study I've just introduced, we further quantitatively test the instant segmentation accuracy, which shows that our, our model performs favorably against the state-of-art method and can even surpass the feat features so wisely learned on a large-scale ImageNet dataset. So besides propagating the segmentation masks, we can also use the learned affinity metrics to propagate human post key points through the videos. We convert the key points of the first frame to a heat map and then propagate the heat map through the rest of the video and recover the key point from the propagated heat map by taking the locations with the maximal response. So we found that the learned affinity can also handle pixel level tracking across frames. The tracked pose can generally and faithfully describe the pose that changes over time. So we also quantitatively evaluate the key point propagation performance in terms of the PCK, where we found that the similar trend with performance for the uh, instance mask propagation task also shown here. So uh, another task we are interested in is to propagate the semantic um, part segmentation, like human part segmentation. So in this task, there's a lot of uh, fine grained details compared to the instance level propagation, for example, the hair region. But we can see that the affinity we learned can also track these small regions faithfully with a long duration. And here is the quantitative performance well, we also have consistent uh, quantitative uh, uh, performance boost compared to the state-of-art method, as well as the ResNet 18 pre-trained model on the ImageNet. So uh, we show that the learned affinity or the CNN self-supervised presentation is a quite general feature that can be used to propagate any attribute that attached to the keyframes. For example, we can perform a lot of editing, the video editing is only on the keyframe, and then we can propagate them to the rest of the videos so that all the, uh, the whole video can be, um, ad, uh, can be automatically edited, um, edited uh, in a similar manner. So here we show example of propagating a, pan, a painting of a random strip texture on videos here. So next, I will also briefly show uh, one of our recent extension uh, as a new application, new application of the video correspondence, the dynamic mesh reconstruction from videos. So this application also utilizes the strip-like painting as I've shown in the last slide. So uh, in this work, our goal is to reconstruct a non-rigid object instance from a video of an animal instance that captured in the wild. And recent related work successfully trains a reconstruction network for a single view object instance given a group of training images. The idea is to disentangle a single input image into textures on the UV space and uh, the mesh shape and also the camera pose. By using a differentiable renderer, the model can be trained using a group of 2D supervision signals, such as mask and RGB texture loss. So, however, when we try to apply the trained image-based model to a testing video, the reconstructed object show discontinuous shape and flickering camera predictions. The main reason is that the large domain gap between uh, there's large domain gap between videos, which mostly captured by mobile phones, and the relatively high quality image dataset used used for training. So to resolve the problem, we utilize for uh, we utilize our video correspondence model to enforce a temporal consistency loss. Recall that uh, the reconstruction network output a texture flow that can map pixels, features, or any attribute from 2D to the UV space. And the UV space here is actually an intermediate space that lies all the mesh faces in a fixed order. And since all the faces in the UV space are normalized, the space will never change with the shape deformation 
and uh, the camera translation. So, an uh, interesting for a single test video, if we only have only one uh, instance, that means the change only exist in the shape deformation and the camera translation. So that means once we project something onto the UV space, it should never change over time. So we make use of this environment and uh, in detail, we paint the random strips only on the first frame and we propagate them to the rest of frames using our self-supervised video correspondence learning algorithm. And after that, we map the individual parts to the UV space Averaging them to have a more reliable part map and warp it to each predicted shape and render back to the 2D space by comparing them against the original propagated strip in a 2D like this. Uh, the shape and the camera can be regularized over time. So imagine that in this way, if we have a wrongly predicted shape, a wrongly predicted camera, which I haven't uh, haven't drawn here, so the warped strips here will be very different um, compared to the corresponding parts in the 2D space. So um, generally, this discrepancy can uh, in, implicitly help to regularize the change of shape and camera over time. So by using these laws, we can see that uh, we can generate much more stable and temporally coherent dynamic mesh reconstruction result using the uh, proposed method. And uh, here is another example where we can see that after the tuning using the uh, temporal consistency uh, from the video correspondence learning algorithm, we can have much more um, refined result for the mesh reconstruction and all of these are trained in a self-supervised manner there's no additional annotations that have been annotated to videos so finally I want to slightly conclude so the key in the in this work is to model the correspondence and to learn the interframe affinity matrix where we utilize it to link two highly correlated tasks we believe this direction still has a long way to go to be improved in terms of the matching performance as well as uh, its applications. For example, we can leverage uh, the algorithm into downstream CV tasks to mine more self-supervised information from, from the videos. For example, for uh, semi-supervised learning, when we still have some uh, but not too many additional labels from image dataset. And in addition, the algorithm should also improve or extend the, correspondent, the correspondence uh, to correspond the pixels or instance that semantically similar across videos instead of just staying in the same video. So that's the possible uh, way to extend uh, in the future. So this is the last slide of my talk and thank you and I would like to take any questions.